Peep, peep. Without bass, there is no heaven or hell. There is just <laughs> Ableton is the way. What's up, guys? My name is Sam World, and in today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to creatively come up with bass lines for when your brain is feeling a little gold, though, as we say, cheap. Maybe these will help you. First ways to get inspired from percussion, guys. Maybe Ableton can help us here with giving us something to work with. Okay. So here we have something cool, but the dynamics are just not there. If I want to be lazy, I have two things to do. One, shorten the MIDI notes, or if you're more of a synth heavy kind of dude. Find a preset that has the right dynamics for the pattern you have. From there, we can use a Phrygian scale, which is just gonna allow us to hit that plus one semitone. Like, pop that bullshit, bitch. Now, if you don't make tech house and you think you're better than us, this idea is still valid for you, sir. You guys are most likely just gonna follow a chord progression. That's some chords now. This leads to the next thing that you need to be doing when creating bass lines for creativity, and it's the stupid. So many proven to work bass line styles that you could just get. For instance, the rolling bass. The trance way. So you learn all of these like proven to work bass lines. This is the, the bass that makes most 50 year olds like cream themselves. Grab a note, put it up an octave. So you could do that. If you want to be fancy and let people know that you're superior, then you can also put the third in there. So now you have like a Chris Lake harmonic bass. And then you want to let people know, I just don't follow chords. Then you can also go to another. Easy, brother. Easy. Again, I think most people know them already. So if you don't, learn them and then try them out in song. Now, if you're in a writer's block, you're gonna find the easy way out so whenever someone uses a sequencer people lose their oh, everything everyone else teaches isn't the truth all you need is acid gen or sting and that's it you make tech house tunes like everyone else that sound good no um th there's limitations to the sequencer my friend okay so the next way to come up with bass lines if you're gonna be making tech tracks or if you're trying to be that weird guy that has weird stuff that sounds complex generic <laughs> But I'm not doing nothing. This is cheat codes. But the limitations of this is that you're always stuck on the tech loops, okay? Now, I'll give you guys some tricks with this guy, too. The other cool thing to do with it is you can also increase your glide on your synths, on your... Make no sense. But that have good rhythm. My favorite one to use, and I have an affiliate link in the description. Shoot the small guy like a few bucks. Plug in the lines is rich as heck already. They don't even have a first name. That's how rich they are. They're anonymous. Now, the way I like to use Riffer is to get my brain working. The brain is always looking for patterns. It's really good at doing that. That's why we see pictures of Mars and, and we see like alien faces and John Summit on, on the peak throwing a live set for like a crowd. The brain is good at patterns and we got to exploit that. But what I like about Riffer more than Acidgen is that I decide the range of the sequence i decide how many notes hit on the root note i i have more control how many notes do i want per eight bar four bars hey this is actually pretty good make it a little tighter so now i can say look oh you know what i want to be the freaking scale It's all about having fun. The next thing is to utilize chords. So we kind of talked about having chords before. Here we're gonna have pretty much the triad chords. When you're working on basses like this, again, use what we talked about to instill creativity, the rhythm and all that. But now bass, you can go to these two notes. So you can go one, one, three, three, or one, one, five, five. Um, again, it's, it's a formula that bassists use 
Um, I used it for a song that sounds really nice, which hopefully you guys will get to hear once it's out. The idea is this, right? I have this. I know I'm an F, so every note I'm allowed to use is part of that chord. So it's uh, going to be very stable. Beep. Make space. However, now that I have that, I can get rid of the chords. I don't need it and I can make a whole different song. So this kind of like limits the note selections I'm gonna have, making it easier to make something that I might like. So you can use chords to help guide your indecisive brain. So that way you don't have to make the decision on what key you're in or what kind of bass you're gonna have to sample instead of making your own bass. Now, there's cool things that we can do. Just because you have a bass loop doesn't mean you have to use the whole thing. For example, And we're going to drag the bass loop here. We're going to slice it up. We're going to use Riffer. You're using pretty much existing ideas already. Note selection. The cool thing is some notes are going to get hit, but it doesn't activate the simpler. So that can be part of the rhythm. And eventually, you're going to find stuff that works. So as a professional sound designer and music producer, whenever I don't have ideas, these are some of the techniques that I utilize to come up with ideas, you know, get my brain working, um, get it to stop being called, a, you know, to be able to shit out an idea. If you found any of these useful, make sure to subscribe. Have your own ways. Make sure to share the love. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to head over to evilsounds.com where you can find all of my sound design work. Presets, my sounds are used by some of the top producers in their respective genres. Best-selling beatport artist for techno, Space92. Yumik, one of the best tech house producers right now, James Hype. Mao P, why did they use my stuff? I don't know. I didn't send it to them. Why don't you go check? Now, if you guys want to further your knowledge, I did make a video on common mistakes producers make with reverbs and delays. It's a must watch if you're always you know, double thinking on what should my reverb or delay be or why doesn't it sound as clean happy producing